Well hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing something and I'm going to need your help. Uh, I'm going to be installing a two camera dash cam and I'm going to be installing it on my uh, 2021 F-150 and there's nothing really out there that shows me how to do a two camera install on a newer F-150, the 14th gen. So I'm going to need your help. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be installing this in a certain way that I want constant power to it and I'm going to put a switch on it so I can turn it on or turn it off. So when I go into a parking lot and I turn off my truck, of course, if it's plugged into the uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter, it's going to shut off. I want this to run continuously and they have a hard wire kit and I'll show you and it will hook up directly to the battery but it's kind of like in sleep mode and I don't like that so basically it waits for something to happen and then it turns on well by then it's probably too late right so I want this to continuously run with my vehicle off and when I park it back in my garage I can manually turn it off it's going to be all hardwired and I'm going to be putting in a switch so also you could hook it up to your OBD there is a wiring apparatus hook up to your OBD but again it's not a switched power turn off your vehicle it turns off the main power and it puts it in standby mode sleep mode um, by then it's too late someone hits you yes the camera turns on but they didn't the camera doesn't catch you actually hitting you so I want this to run continuously so what do we get in this box again this is a uh, and I bought this with my own money um, I paid it was on sale 120 bucks off Black Friday um, November 2022 I think I paid five hundred and fifty dollars Canadian it was hundred twenty dollars off so it's a pretty pricey dash camera but it's 4k up front 2k at the back so that's why I wanted the best I have a Ford worth a lot of money up here in Canada so okay so here's the the main doecky and you get your cable to your rear camera where's that there's your rear camera. Here's that hard wire kit that I'll show you. Um, looks like there's a little filter for the lens. There is your mounting bracket. So this doesn't use suction. It sticks right onto your window. Which I kind of like. Is my previous three dash cameras, it's a suction and sometimes it's there, sometimes it holds. Here's your 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. Again, on my Ford, it is switched, meaning I turn off the truck, the power goes off of my cigarette lighter. So, really no good. I want this to be on when I leave it on. It comes with a 32 meg uh, memory card. I'm going to be putting in a 128. Comes with a couple little uh, cable holder stickies, and looks like a spare. 3M mount for that and as well as your basic operators manual so what you're going to need with this job is pretty well you're going to need a 12 volt tester we got to find out where constant power is um, I'm going to be using this switch for my old uh, PIA lights. You can use any switch. When I start my truck, I can hit this button, and there we go. I got power to my camera. I can shut off my truck and leave, and I still got power to my camera. It is not running in sleep mode or whatever. It is running continuously. I'm sure this thing doesn't draw that much amount of power. The cables are really, really small, so... I can't even imagine it drawing that much power. So I could probably run a full day in the parking lot and it's not going to do anything. Uh, the nice thing about this Thinkware, um, you can actually go in there and say if the voltage gets below, you know, 12.2 volts on the main battery, 
it'll shut off. But I doubt it'll even get close to that. So when I get into a parking lot, I can make sure it's on. When I come home to my garage and I shut off the vehicle, there you go, I shut it off, no power going to it, it's done. Here's that hard wire kit that comes with it. And uh, so basically you got your ground. This wants to go to your uh, main battery and this to your accessory. So when you turn your truck on, power will go to your accessory and it'll power the unit. When you turn your truck off, this is directly connected to a 12 volt source, your battery, i.e. And, but the unit is in sleep mode. And I don't like that. Also, uh, I think this is pretty old fashioned, isn't it? Glass fuses? Who uses those nowadays? Now how big is this fuse? And we'll tell you how much power this guy is draining. It's a pretty thin wire, so I can't see it being a big fuse. Okay, so that's a two amp fuse. That is not drawing a lot of power. So yeah, you could probably leave it on for two days and it won't drain your battery. Don't hold me on that, but. Okay, so let's get started here. Like I said, I want to hardwire this, so we got to find a 12 volt uh, source. What I'm going to do is basically, I'm just going to be wiring these, these two together. I am going to be getting rid of this fuse here. I don't like that. That's glass fuse you don't need. That's pretty archaic. Okay, I got one that's probably rated for 30 amp, but whatever. So I'm going to be putting in my own little fuse with the normal uh, plastic ones. Okay, so let's get started. First, we got to find a 12 volt source. Let's, let's do that. And on the F-150s, you got to go to your passenger side where the passenger's right foot would be and pull a panel and let's see what we got. Okay, so right here is your panel, fuse panel. Let's see if we can find, we need constant power. So now take your 12 volt tester, truck is off, and let's find a sufficient ground. Okay, I found a good ground there, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if we can find a good power source. Just start touching your fuse until the light, oh look at that, first fuse I found. That's a 30. 20, 30. That one's off. I want to get a little bit low, lower power one. I don't need a 30. There's a 7.5. That would be nice to tap into that. So of course, Ford doesn't give you a manual anymore, so you gotta go online. Download the manual, and I have it on my phone. I want to see what number 20 is. See what I'm going to be plugging into. 20 is a, is a passive start, ignition start, key inhibit solenoid. Hmm. Okay, 13 and 15, they have constant power. What are those? 13 and 15. Instrument Cluster steering column control module. Number 15 is the intro. Okay, I just want to get a one that's a little bit, you know, who knows? I could affect stuff if I start unplugging it. That says number three. What's number three? Number three is a 7.5, yeah. Wireless charger. Well, guess what? I don't have a wireless charger. Why would I have a fuse there? So, guess what? That's what we're going to tap into. And I can safely pull that out because I know I don't have wireless charging in here. Okay, so that's what we're going to tap into. Uh, number three... 7.5 amp wireless charger. Hey, let's pull this out. 
So that's what I pulled out, just a little guy. 7.5 amp. Now, there is something that it's called a uh, piggyback fuse relay. So you could plug it in, and then you plug this in, and then you plug in another fuse. And I'll show you that. I'm supposed to be getting that tomorrow on Amazon. But for now, I just want to find out where things are going. Okay, since we found a good power source, it's on even with the vehicle off. Um, like I said, I'm going to be putting in this switch here. So I physically have to turn the power on and off. I think I'm going to mount it here. So by doing this, that means the power has to go to this switch. So I'm going to go through a fuse to this switch. And then this switch will go to the connection for the uh, dash camera. So how do we get to here? Well, looks like we can take this out. I think, yeah, you push these two tabs in. That will get rid of your main glove box. Well, that's nice and easy, but now how do we get to here? I really don't want to have to take any molding apart here. If you've had this connectors on, or I'd just be able, there is a little bit of a hole here, you know, where the two meet. It's not quite exact, but it's not enough to push that big guy in. I should just see if I can remove this trim. Well, it's on pretty good. Let me get a trim tool. Let's try. Some plastic, plastic on plastic. Okay, it's going. Okay, yeah. Gentle. Okay, well, uh, just get this out of the way. There's a little hole that you can poke up in here. There you go. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Now, there's some sharp pieces around here. How about I zip tie it? Oh, no, there's some actual... Oh. Okay. Boy, I like that. I like where the switch is going to be. No one should really see it. You know what, for now I'm going to keep the glove box off. We might need it to put the radar on. I could put this back on. You don't even know I did anything. Okay. So now, in order for us in order for us to get the power from here to this column and down, we got to take this off. Um, so this little trim here, this is what's got to come off first. Then there's two screws behind this handle. So some people will actually, when they install their dash cam, they will actually tap into here. But again, this is not constant power. I want constant power. And if you want a, a sleep mode, um, you have to have it hardwired somehow to a battery source power. So that only gives you power when the vehicle is on. After you shut it off, you get nothing. So um, they do have a little adapter kits. Um, they also actually have a, a fancy dash cam that is made for the Ford and you basically put it on the same bracket as this and it gives you a pigtail harness. I looked at that and it's only 2K and it doesn't have a rear channel. So I wanted the best that you could get nowadays and that's 4K and I wanted dual channel so that ruled it out. Okay so next thing in order is Let's get this out. There you go. So I got in here. Okay. Oh, a little holder. Okay, there. Geez, that looks like 
our famous 10 millimeter. Okay, so let's see what we could do here. Okay, that came out pretty nice. There's a little plug in here for your tweeter. Maybe let's just get that unplugged. Push a little tab, and that gets out. Okay. Wow, that's an airbag. Okay, so um, just to let you guys know, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, disconnect your uh, negative on your battery, and then wait about 10 minutes for everything residual to pop out. Maybe you have to wait longer, but just be careful when you're working on this airbag. That's why when I'm going to my rear channel, I don't want to go up above because there's airbags all along here. So that's why I want to go down below. Along the foot, there's no airbags down there. So, okay, we got this out. And uh, let's bring the two cables, right? We need the cable going to the actual uh, dash cam as well as the cable going to the rear camera. Okay, well I got my dash cam on, I cleaned my window, like I said, it's two-sided tape, one goes to the actual mount, the other one to your windshield. Okay, so let's get the power plugged in. Okay, and then the second channel, and you want that end, not the straight end, okay, because that would just make the wires a lot neater. There. There we are. Now, we can gently poke it underneath here. Don't come down too hard, okay? You'll, you'll crease it. It's going pretty good. Maybe I can poke those. One gets poked underneath there pretty easily. Let's see about the other one. That's good enough. Everything's still powered good, good, good. Okay. Well, this is going pretty good. Um, I'm always leery with a brand new vehicle taking panels off. You know plastic, snappy, snappy. Okay, so. Let's get this cable management down here. Now the bad thing is this one's not so bad. Oh, yeah. This one's not so bad. It's the power one, so we can just drop it. I hope down here, and I'll try to grab it here. Okay, so we're going to remove this cover here. I'll see if this come off a little bit. This door trim. Yeah. Don't force it. Get your Get your trim tool in there to help it. One doesn't want to go. Okay, so that one sure helped. I got a lot of access here now. Now there's Looks like some wire grooves here. You got a couple of these, I don't know, ivory guys. Stick your cables in there. Okay. Oh yeah, that may 
made it so much nicer. I can come down right into my case. Okay, so where's my power? There's that. Now we gotta wrap this all the way in. The one going to the rear channel. So we'll just leave that here. How about we start, how about we keep wiring that uh, rear channel to the back? Okay, let's take this off. Just with your hands. And there's, looks like, and that's what that looks like. Get that out of the way. Yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll come down here with the wire. Yeah, that's a better. Okay, so this is for my rear channel. Obviously, you want to be good with your cabling. Don't be lazy. Take your time. Okay, so I've got it that far. Oh, boy. So, let's continue on here. Does the rear one do the same thing? Not as easy. Let's get my trim tool. Wherever you feel it binding. There. Okay. So we got this now. What I'm doing is basically, I'm just kind of squeezing it underneath there. There's lots of room. Squeezes pretty easily. And here we go. That'll work. Okay, so. What's next? Oh, I guess I'll squeeze this pretty easily here. Up to about here I can get it. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just going to drag that cable as far as I can to, I think I can go about right there. Then I'm going to have to let the seat down and fold the back to see where to go from there. Okay, so we're done here. Yeah, make sure your rug is hooked. And let's put this back on. Okay, well, let's get this seat folded down. And then, remember, just pull on here to release it. Now, what do I do here? I gotta come a long way up. Hey. There, I got it up to there. That's pretty nice. Pushing it. Okay. Am I going to have it? Oh, yes. Lots. Good. Good, 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 good. So I'm just keep pushing it. Kind of goes behind the trim here pretty easily. Now, so I got it up to here, but I don't want to take the chance and just rest it on this channel. I'd like to somehow see if I can get it in behind here. Okay, so I'm going to install it where I can see the writing. It doesn't tell me if it's this way or that way. I'm not going to glue it though until I get it all powered up. But let's get this connected. Okay, and then let's pull the excess back. So I only want what, whatever I need here. I'm not going to glue it, but I think 
I think that that'll be nice right there. It's foggy in my truck. It's not the warmest outside. Okay, well, we've got the cables run. So that means, why don't we hook up the power? Okay, so here's the power that goes to the dash cam. And this This is the power that comes from my switch. Conveniently plugs into that. Now, I could hook up this ground wire and that'll illuminate the little light that's on this, but I don't want that lit. I'm hoping that I don't have to because I should see some type of power indicator on my dash cam. So, Yes, let's get a fuse. I'm going to try a two amp fuse just because it's pretty pretty skinny wires. When you look at that, that's pretty skinny, so that's not drawing a lot of current. So let's not give it a lot. Yeah, that's a nice solder connection. Okay, hey, let's melt that heat shrink tubing. Looks all good. Okay, let's go in the truck. And all we have to do now is hook up this white wire to the uh, power, the two powers that go to the dash camera and the ground from the dash camera. So let's get that done. Those two big massive wires. My God, is that thin. This is like 30 gauge wire. And we'll get it onto this one here. That's coming from the on off switch. So basically, that'll complete the circuit. Okay, let me get some heat shrink tubing here. Okay, these two wires. We'll supply power to the dash camera. Remember, one was only supposed to go to accessory and one to your 12 volt battery. So when you turned off your vehicle, it would go into sleep mode. And like I said, I didn't want that. I wanted it continuously on. So hence, we had to put in a switch and connect it directly to the 12 volt source. Okay, so let me get this connection soldered and heat shrink tubing. So I'll get that done now. When I was testing out for my fuses, I needed a ground. So this guy right here is a good ground because that's where I had my clamp on. So we're going to loosen that bolt and put the ground on from the dash camera. Okay, I've got everything put aside, plugged in. I did test my little switch here. Sends power to the camera and that. So let's button everything back up. We're done down here. Let's get this cover on. I sure wish there was a manual inside this glove box, but no. So there's kind of like two little hooks on. You gotta line up. Three actually. And if you want to know, that's where your in cabin air filter is, behind there. Okay, let's get this back on. Uh, the tweeter connected, and then a pillar, and then the, those two 10 millimeter screws. And then, yeah, so you can just see my dash camera there behind the, cam uh, behind the mirror. So anyways, well, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thanks a lot for the help. Um, installing a two camera dash cam in your F-150 2021 or higher, it's not that bad. I did the right thing, I think, by going down below, not above, 
where all your air airbags are and that and take your time um, definitely have a trim tool a plastic trim tool a plastic on plastic is great it doesn't mar it so get that and then um, take your time and it'll be well worth it uh, two cameras are better than one anyways again thanks for all your help please like and subscribe and uh, well good luck with your dash camera install